Yes, so about the Lexus, the, I am Katrin, uh, Gaidi is also here. I'm going to do the introduction and then Gaidi is uh, going to speak about the word selection for the test. And also Aku and Anton are here present in the audience. So we are creating a vocabulary test, Lexis, uh, for Estonian L2 speakers uh, to assess the knowledge of Estonian. So what is the motiv motivation of this uh, test? It's uh, purely practical, out of the need. Uh, we are speaking in the context of uh, research and the experimental setting. So uh, right now, uh, in second language acquisition studies, um, the speaker's knowledge of uh, Estonian is mostly measured or assessed by questionnaires. And it's uh, usually every researcher has their own questionnaire, and there is a lot of variation between the questionnaires that are used in the studies. Uh, another method that is used is uh, self-evaluation. But there are also some uh, problems there because also self-evaluation uh, involves a lot of variation and there are some uh, cultural differences. For example, in some cultures, the students have uh, difficulty admitting that they don't know something. So maybe they give a higher uh, evaluation of their knowledge than they actually know about the language. And uh, also, um, we really need a quick and uh, objective uh, test to assess the knowledge uh, in, in, in the context of uh, second language acquisition research. Uh, so, for example, uh, Lexdale is a quite good example of uh, this kind of tests. It's uh, widely used. Uh, it's uh, really easy to do. It takes only five minutes. It's a lexical decision task and the task for the participant is quite easy, for, in my opinion. So they see a word on the screen and have to decide whether it's a word or non-word. And it only takes about five minutes, and when they have completed the task, uh, they immediately get some feedback. They are so shown the number of correct and incorrect uh, answers. And, uh, yeah. And Lextail is, is widely used in, in studies and, and other studies have shown that actually the knowledge of uh, vocabulary is a really good indicator of the general knowledge of the language. So we can uh, test only one area of the language and it gives us uh, a wider overview of, of the general knowledge of the language. Um, so Lextail is meant for um, English L2 speakers and for advanced lev uh, level. But actually, um, studies have shown that uh, those tests can be used for beginners and intermediate level uh, as well. And actually for uh, native speakers, for example, for children or for uh, learners or, or for native speakers with really different backgrounds. And then, as I already mentioned, uh, Lextail is uh, widely used in, in psycholinguistic uh, studies. Uh, and based on Lextail, there are other versions uh, developed for uh, different languages. For example, Lextita, which is for Italian, or Lexize, which is for uh, Finnish. And there is a, a version for French, uh, Spanish, Chinese. And uh, right now, the Estonian and uh, Finnish versions are under development. So. Uh, what tools do we have at the moment to assess the learner's uh, knowledge of, of language? Well, there are those really long and extensive tests for European, common European framework uh, of uh, references for languages that are organized and carried out by the Education of Youth Board. But if we uh, think about uh, uh, research and experimental setting, those tests are really, really long and they are really exhausting for the participant, and they are really difficult to evaluate for the researcher. And sometimes the language test could take more time than the experiment, experiment itself. And to be honest, uh, we don't really have access to those tests. So even if we would want to use them, uh, it's not so easy to use them. Uh, also, uh, the Institute of Estonian Language has some uh, materials uh, online 
uh, where we can find, for example, vocabulary which is uh, labeled by the proficiency levels. But uh, in order to use them, we have to combine something. Um, so that leads us that there is no standardized, quick, easy test to use in experimental uh, setting. Uh, and, but on the positive side, we can say that the lexical decision task uh, is used in Estonian. And knowing that the Lextail can be adjusted for other languages, we think that the Lextest is a really good uh, tool uh, to develop uh, for the community to use in, in research. And it will be freely available for everyone who is interested. So uh, uh, what are we doing right now and uh, in which stage the development is? Uh, we have done the pre-selection of the words and we have uh, selected the non-words and we are, ready to, we are almost ready <laughs> to start the uh, validation process. If everything goes according to the plan, then maybe next week we can go online. And the validation uh, proce process means that uh, we are in inviting native speakers and the language learners despite their, or regardless of the language level or native uh, language to participate. And they, uh, after the, um, collecting the data, we are going to do the final selection of the words and we are going to select out which are the best words to mm, differentiate um, beginner learners from in intermediate learners and intermediate learners from advanced learners. And we are closely working with the University of Turku. Uh, they created the Finnish version. And uh, we have uh, had very many interesting conversations about Estonian. And, and we are uh, consulting them quite often. And they are helping us. Uh, they are helping us to conduct the online experiment as well. Uh, we are hosting our experiment on their website or platform, Villa. And our main goal is to create an easy, standardized, quick test that can be used for all levels, not, o not only for advanced level, but also for uh, beginners and intermediate, because um, we are working also with the beginner learners of Estonia, so it's really important to include them as well. Uh, now I'm going to show you some uh, screenshots. So this is an uh, information page that the uh, participants will see in the validation process. They are here just explanation what the task is about, how long it's going to take and, and what we are doing with the data. Uh, after that, we are asking them to fill in a uh, background questionnaire. I hope this is the last uh, background questionnaire we have to do <laughs> in order to uh, conduct a study. So there are questions about the um, knowledge of Estonia and in which classes they have participated, have they taken any exams, what was the last level and how much they use Estonia in their daily activities and so on. Uh, and after that they are presented with the practice session where they can see uh, how the test actually looks. So they're going to see a word and they have to decide whether it's a word or non-word. For example, so and two uh, options are shown and they have to select. Another one, umuk. So they have to decide whether it's a word or non-word. And uh, when they have completed the uh, test, then uh, they are also um, given the feedback. They can see the number of words that they uh, answered correctly and words that, uh, yeah, they, they're going to see the number of words that were answered correctly out of the total number. Yeah, so now I'm going to give the floor to Kaidi, and Kaidi will walk you through uh, the stimuli selection process. So, hope you can hear me. So, yeah. Uh, so essentially, the task seems easy. So you pick like 90 words and 45 non-words. But if you actually like start grading it, it takes a couple of months actually to get it all set up. So how did we pick those words? So first we, we, ch uh, we selected like a suitable corpus. So we took like a, a written corpus because it will be a written text, uh, yeah, test. So we took the balanced corpus of Estonian and first divided it into six different frequency bands. And from those words, we then, uh, these frequency bands, we then randomly sampled 30 words 
of each frequency band. Yeah, and then we manually carefully look at these words and then we, we exclude the words that were not suitable. So we looked at, for example, that we don't include foreign or cognate words. For example, like show or clover, because there are like other words that are really similar in other foreign, big foreign languages, like English and German. Then we looked at that we don't include any offensive words not to upset any of our non-native or native speakers. And then we also checked for the ambiguity. So essentially that each of our items in our test would only have like one meaning. So for example, this word load, load is not a good word because it, due to the morphology it can have two, so it can be either bone or it can be a broom meaning. So those words are excluded. And finally, we, this is a part we discussed, like I guess, like a month, it's like, should we exclude like morphologically complex word or not? So on one side, it's interesting because we can study morphological complexity through the test, but like at the final stage, we kind of decided that it's, we don't want this information because then it would also, like we would test other stuff than only derivation. Or like we would like test the morphological complexity, not the lexical knowledge. Okay, so what we ended up is then 90 items. So there were less words from uh, really frequent words and really like infrequent words because those are like those are better differentiated by like the level, and we had like more in the middle level, which is always like a harder proficient levels. Yes, uh, and this is how the part of speech distribution looks like. So, as in a, like a Estonian written corpus, there are like there are mostly nouns, then a bit less adjectives, and then a bit more like even less verbs. Uh, yeah, and then we also checked with this. A key second language tools to see if this, like our distribution, also like reflects their distribution. So you can see there is also the same. There is some some words can kind of reflect the C1, so really high level, and other ones which reflect only A1. So it seems to fit this tool too. Okay, and then similarly, like the pseudo word list, we there we selected 45 items. And it was the same similar kind of the process to going through them manually, and then we 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 picked new words then from corpus also in different in frequency and length, and then we changed the wor like some letters in these words, so to get a non-word. So if we have a, like a word like Maya, then we changed two letters and we got Klaya, which is like a non-word, and we checked that this would be like it would still reflect the phonotactics of Estonian. And finally, as a final stage, we also checked that there wouldn't be any like foreign words in major other languages. Yes, okay. So for example, we, we expect to have many Estonian speakers who are Finnish native speakers, so we checked that there won't be any Finnish words there, but also like English and German. And then finally, we decided it's also maybe good to check for the dialects. So we went to like a dialect corpus and looked at there wouldn't be any we, we thought our non-words were actually like dialectal words, or also slang words were excluded to make it really like straightforward and simple. Good. But yeah, like I said, there were also like many issues how to create and what like aspects you should think about. So first is what is even like a derivation if we want to exclude them, but it's, it's in Estonia it's not such a simple task because there is like a, some, in some cases it's like a clear derivation you have a like a, yeah. Janu and Janona, for example, they are derived clearly, but there are other words which is this boundary of derived or not derived is a bit more not so clear and a bit fuzzy. And also it's like what what is actually like a foreign word, right? So there is so many foreign influences in Estonian actually, so it's when do you decide it's not it's now a foreign word. So it's this was what we discussed a lot in our group. And finally it's what are good pseudo words? So it's just like how how different they should be from the word, like the actual words. It's in some sense it's like good if it, we make the test really difficult and they're really similar, but then it might like become possible for the non-native speakers. Yes. Okay. Who do we expect as participants? So first phase for this validation phase, we want essentially everyone who speaks Estonian. 
So we are on one hand, of course, we, we need like lots of non-native speakers of Estonian, of really different language levels and backgrounds, and so we hope to like also advertise it in Estonian, but also abroad. But also, it's it would be interesting to get like as many native speakers of Estonian as possible. So not only this like highly educated linguist sitting in this room, but hopefully also get like a different background at this education level. Some people maybe who don't even have a higher education, right? So we could also see if this kind of test is not also suitable maybe for native speakers. And future, so Finnish version has actually tested the same test with children and they also show a really good results that it actually also reflects how their children learn their native language and you can like that you can use the test for that. And yeah, and if we still have energy, maybe Estonian bilinguals in Finland is the last group. Okay, so conclusions, so as Katrin already said, there is actually like a really dire practical need for this kind of quick test to assess Estonian uh, second language knowledge, and especially in experimental setting, which, which are usually long, so you only have like a really short time of period where you can test, the, test them, so it would be nice to get something something good and something fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like, yeah, so there are other tests that have been shown to be suitable for this purpose. And yeah, hopefully this, yeah, this tool will be then freely available soon and everyone will use. So on the first hand, we want to use it for the experimental setting for the researchers, but we also hope that maybe language teachers can use it or also students of who learn Estonian. Good. And then we are websites up, so Anton has been working hard on that. So essentially you can already visit it and see our test and maybe if you notice something, you can let us all four of us know so we can still fix it, but we uh, officially launch it next week. And yeah, and we are grateful we have funding and we look forward to the questions now. Oh yes, uh, thank <laughs> you very much. We have uh, now uh, this. Uh, plenty of time for questions, uh, so please uh, go ahead. I am sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very good to have this tool. Uh, I was wondering because you had so put so much effort in picking those words. Are you going to have one set that basically, when people repeatedly? Uh, evaluate themselves against mm -hmm. and they will eventually remember, or do you have different uh, variations of it? For this test, we only have one. But there is a plan to do, like I'm actually working on an another project with Anton where we create like a bigger data set where we collect this similar data for like for more words. So there we actually want to do, like, have like a 10,000 words. But this is like a really small, very validated and checked word list. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Thanks. Very interesting. And I think uh, the practical <coughs> relevance of this um, uh, cannot be overestimated. It really is for educational context. One big problem that people have in foreign language classrooms is that um, you afterwards, for more from intermediate to advanced, you no longer focus as much as on the, on the lexical part. So then teachers do not know who actually has which background. And it will really be very helpful to inform the teachers of mm -hmm. who will have to do more reading and more specialized texts. Mm -hmm. But I have a question in that academic context then. Um, so, um, you know, the um, Laufrent Nation uh, kind of work that w uh, focus on word families that, you know, if you know happy, you also know unhappy, that's mm -hmm. transparent. But then there are other um, prefixes and suffixes, derivational processes, which are not actually yet known. So have you considered also including some of those aspects? And uh, because then you could also see which of these morphological processes they're yet aware of and which ones they're not aware of to then also foster their, in a sense, dynamic uh, vocabulary more. Have you considered that, that you could also branch into um, probing into that to support uh, then also teachers to foster awareness mm -hmm. of these morphological processes? I think first hand, maybe not. I think what we want to first see is like how they do with the simple words, but I guess it can be for sure like advancement. Once we have this test validated, right, so we can branch out more. But that's a good point. Because it's like it is Estonian, right? So the morphology is like a really huge part of the Estonian language. So you can't really even differentiate maybe like lexicon and morphology that much. 
if I mm -hmm. can follow up on that, the reason to then include it uh -huh. is exactly because then the core vocabulary that you, some of it you just need to learn by heart. Uh -huh. The other things, once you have understood the regularities, the derivational processes that actually will allow them to grow, they're, um, you know, it will really expand um, the dynamic lexicon in a sense. And Laufer and Nation do claim that they have seven levels, if I remember correctly, of um, morphological processes, even mm -hmm. for English. <laughs> oh. And then they, um, they basically say only some of them are transparent and others are not transparent. They have to be explicitly taught. So it has direct ramifications for the educational context. Okay, yeah. We have to read up on that. <laughs> yes, Simon, please. I have a very specific question. <laughs> Maybe it's just <coughs> because uh, we have a similar problem. Uh, so why can't you access Sefer uh, tests? Is it because um, of some technical problems or copyright problems or personal information problems? To be honest, I don't know the reason. Uh, I have uh, been looking for them online, but I haven't actually ask from the authorities the rights to use them. But I think it's the copyright mainly. I'm mm. not sure, maybe someone no, knows more. No, yeah, actually, actually, you can access them. We have, uh, at the moment, we have two corpus uh, query systems. One is Emma, Kay. and Emma includes actually like uh, text produced uh, by younger learners. And then in Italian University, you have interlanguage uh, uh, corpus, uh, and there you can access also text written by adults. So this data is actually available. And uh, now we will, in the Institute, uh, we have a very big uh, European project that also has uh, the purpose of uh, this learner uh, corporate collection. So this, uh, this amount of data will be even more okay. like, uh, increased and, and, and definitely accessible. So this is for sure. Very good yeah, to know. And maybe <laughs> it would be, I also thought to s uh, wanted to say that, um, like two questions. Um, um, one is question, another one is suggestion. About this uh, test, this is like a reception and production, right? So if you just, uh, if uh, uh, learners just have to read the text, so mm -hmm. it means that you just actually measure this uh, productive, uh, preceptive vocabulary, not productive vocabulary. So it's not uh, such as like um, appropriate, you know, for all, all um, uh, uh, so that you cannot really like, uh, uh, measure, you know, like speaking, and uh, and uh, so you just only can measure reading and uh, and listening. I mean, like product. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like um, so, it's meant to measure vocabulary size, but it's yes, it's like more. It's just it has been shown that you can like like people's vocabulary size is kind of related to how they also yeah, read yeah, and this. Yeah, but for teachers and yeah, learners, yeah. it's uh, it's important yeah, to yeah. understand also yeah, not only course. your productive but also your. Uh, uh, receptive, uh, not only receptive, but also productive vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then second thing was that uh, maybe when you are so far that really you, you have those texts, you can actually use our infrastructure because with Arvid, I was we he was mostly developing all kind of uh, psycholinguistics. Uh, uh, we call them games, and they are now actually available in Synaweb as mm -hmm. sub page. Mm -hmm. So, and there are also the same infrastructure so that you just uh, have two words, non-words, and you choose them, and then you can have statistic uh, statistical analysis of this so just mm -hmm. uh, yeah we, we mm -hmm. might uh, we might discuss yeah. this yes. yeah for sure so don't don't build it uh, from scratch yeah we have yeah. this all yeah. done <laughs> good to know <laughs> um, and also there are some tests also like test test a, a, a environment uh, so that maybe it's, it would be also interesting to see what they measure how they measure and to see what kind of methodology you are going to use mm -hmm. right yeah. okay but